If you're interested in getting into finance, there's really no way to avoid Excel. Um, a lot of students have not had a ton of experience with Excel or um, it's been a while since you've used it. Uh, on the other hand, some students use it on a regular basis. Anyhow, this video is uh, we're going to walk through an example of things that I think you need to just get a very basic under understanding of Excel, um, in particular for investments. So we're going to be working through um, a, a series of examples uh, using some returns data. So these returns are um, in percentage. Um, so let me click on this one right here. So that is a negative 11.45% return. Now this is the, the Fama French um, industry data. We'll talk more about that later. That's not particularly important. But what you need to know is that each one of these columns is the uh, stock returns for a portfolio of companies in that particular industry. So this would be the food industry, the soda industry, the beer industry, um, so on and so forth. The other thing you need to know about this data is that this is the date um, and the, the formatting of the date is a little bit weird um, in that it, the first four digits are the year, the last two digits are the month. So this would be 1990, January. So January 1990. These are monthly returns. This is going to, uh, this date format is going to throw us for a little bit of a loop, but we can overcome that and it's good practice on how to overcome that. Anyhow, we are going to start with um, some basic, what I will call summary statistics of these returns. We just want to get a feel for how these different industries have performed over uh, the period of January 1990 um, through uh, 2019, so through February 2019. Now, one of the things you might have just noticed is that uh, the, the column names have just disappeared. So we don't really know which industries these are. Um, the first thing I think we need to, to remedy here is to freeze that top uh, corner. So what I mean by that is you can use a shortcut um, to actually freeze uh, the, the, the top row and the top or in this left column. So you have to click this cell and then there's options um, uh, under this freeze panes. And now when we move around the spreadsheet, we always know which industry we're in and we know that this is the date column. Um, so this is just going to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so we're going to work through calculating some basic statistics of, um, of these returns. So those statistics, I'm at first going to put them um, at the very bottom. This is not going to be their final resting place, but this is the, the easiest way or what I think is the easiest way to do this. So the first thing I want to do is to calculate an average return um, for each one of these industries. So I'm going to label it average. That's not particularly surprising. So we can use the Excel function average and we can highlight the entire column here. Now, um, I'm going to be using a lot of shortcuts, um, and unfortunately, shortcuts in the Mac version of Excel and the Windows version of Excel are different. Um, but uh, you should be able to, to map them separately or to use menus for that. The purpose of this video isn't to show you all those shortcuts. Um, there are a lot of good videos out there on that. But one of the things we need to do is we are going to be, uh, we need to lock these cells down. The reason we need to lock these cells down is we are going to be dragging across formulas so we don't have to type uh, each one of these Excel functions over and over and over again for each industry. So what I've done so far is I've set up the average function and we're going to be calculating this over the cells B2 through B351. Now, we want to lock down these cells, um, and this is where those little dollar signs up here come into play. Now, this is going to lock down those cells, those exact cells, B2 through B351. But we don't want that because we want to be able to drag this formula across for each individual industry. So what we need to do 
is only have uh, dollar signs before the numbers here, and that's going to let us drag this across columns. Now let me show you what that looks like. So the average um, uh, uh, return, average monthly return for this agriculture industry is 0.94%. Uh, percent. But now what I want to do is I want to calculate that for all the other industries. And what you can do is you can either manually drag this across um, such and just keep going and it's going to calculate each industry. Um, right here you can see that uh, because we locked down those cells B2 through B351, uh, uh, we're just dragging it across columns. Now, I was manually dragging it across columns. That's kind of a pain in the butt. So if you go over here um, and highlight all the cells you want to, um, I know I said this wasn't going to be a shortcuts video, but, you know, this is super, super handy. If you hit, like, Control-R, that's going to drag that formula all the way across those highlighted cells. Okay, now we want to calculate a few more summary statistics, really to get a, a feel for what these returns are. So we're going to be calculating the median returns, the standard deviation of ret these monthly returns, the maximum return, and the minimum return. So the, the, the median is a very helpful statistic because uh, uh, returns are highly skewed. Sometimes there's really, really big uh, returns. Sometimes there's really, really uh, large negative returns. And those can uh, sort of be misleading when we're talking about an average return. So um, the median return is just going to be our, our middle return. And we can use the median function in Excel. Once again, we highlight all those cells. Um, F4 is what I'm hitting to lock those cells down. And we've got the median. Same thing with standard deviation. We have the max function. And we're going to have the min function. OK. So now what we can do is we can drag those cells across. Um, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to highlight all those cells, um, move the highlight all of them, and then hit right. Now, this is kind of ugly. Um, what I mean by that is, do I really care that the standard deviation is 6.145781 or is maybe 6.4 or 6.14 sufficient? Um, and I'm going to say that we don't need all these, these decimal um, or these, these numbers all the way out just because it's not really informative to me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to format those just as numbers, and the numbers here go down to two decimal places, and that's all I need. Okay, now when you save your spreadsheet, it's just going to save. And actually, this is going to be a, a side point uh, just about best practices. When you save your, your Excel workbook, what it's going to do, what Excel is going to do in the background is it's also going to save the location of um, the highlighted cell. So it's going to save the fact that you're, you're, uh, you've highlighted B2 here. Now, the reason this is important is you should um, always put your, your uh, highlighted cell in the top left corner of one of your uh, spreadsheets, preferably your first spreadsheet in your workbook. Um, this is because you don't really want to start in some like random section. Like if you uh, saved your workbook with your cell highlighted on AP310, um, that just sort of looks messy. And so you want to uh, do what I tell my kids uh, when they're done playing with their toys and that you have to put away your toys. In this case, your, the highlighted cell is the, your toy. So always put it back in that top left corner. Okay, 
So when we open the workbook after we've saved it next time, um, we honestly don't know that there's a whole bunch of summary statistics here. Um, uh, maybe you do, or and you turn in the spreadsheet for an assignment, or maybe your boss has asked this for you, and doesn't want to go searching for this data. Time is time is valuable, and the more uh, you uh, suck up people's time for uh, by s making them search for answers, uh, the the less value the product has. So what we're going to do here is we are going to create another workbook uh, or another worksheet of what I'm going to call results or summary stats or whatever. So we create a new sheet and this name sheet one down here, that's not really informative. Um, so we want to label this. And you can either, uh, I think you can right click it. Um, I just use shortcuts. Um, so we're going to call this monthly return statistics. That's descriptive. Now, what we need to do is we need to actually get statistics for each one of those industries. We want, that's what we want. So we're going to highlight all these industries. And I want to paste them as a column. Columns are easier to read, and they're also easier to print. So we're going to paste special, and in this case, we are going to transpose. Um, we're going to transpose what we've just highlighted. Okay, so we got that. Now let's label this industry, and that's a good starting point. Now, we need to get those summary statistics over there. What, um, what you might want to do is highlight them all, move over to your or into your results uh, spreadsheet, and then do the exact same thing in that you paste them after transposing. This is going to be a mistake, and I'll show you why here. So you get some error message, you've got some circular reference. The reason you're getting the circular reference here is because the formula is being pasted over and it's trying to take the average of this column and this column is not, well, I have no idea what it's uh, going to tell us, the average of the standard deviations across different industries. It just doesn't make sense. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to paste those formulas. So let me undo that. Okay, what we want to do is we want to paste the values. So we can do paste special. We're still going to transpose those, um, those cells, but we're going to paste just the value. So this is treating it just as the number. You'll notice that there's no formula here anymore. That's what we want. So unfortunately, the, the, the formatting disappeared here. There is an option to uh, to maintain the formatting, but it's easy enough to turn this back into a number with two decimal places. So once again, we're going to want to freeze those cells. And now we actually have something convenient. Um, we can actually um, uh, figure out uh, fairly easily that the steel industry has an average return of 0.7% per month over this time period. A minimum return of about negative 33 percent it's just much easier and your boss or your professor or whatever can actually just look here that you have completed uh, this analysis and it's the monthly return statistics now um, one other thing that is going to be helpful is that uh, we've got all these industries and they're all they're all different um, you've got agriculture food soda um, the this is informative. This is good data to have. Um, but sometimes we just want to see what like the average of those industries is. So what I'm going to do here now is going to be calculating all those uh, summary statistics for just the average of these, these different, um, um, different uh, industry returns. And these are going to be the industry returns for the month. 
So we can do the exact same thing. Take the average return over here, just highlight the cells that we want, and drag it down. Now, um, what I'm going to do here is going to um, maintain my formatting as a number with two decimal places. And now we have the average industry returns in any given month. And what's nice here is we can just drag those over, the, the, those functions over, and paste the values, transpose it, and then I'm also just going to paste the formatting. I'm going to label it because labels are important. And now we have some basic summary statistics for um, these industry portfolios. So um, I, I think this is a good exercise. Um, actually, just out of habit, did you, if you might have noticed that I put the cell away. So now it's up in the top left corner. Same thing for that first sheet. I'm going to save it. And actually what I would recommend here is what we really care about is the our analysis, this monthly return statistics. So I would make it the first sheet in your workbook. That way, this is exactly what opens up next time you open this Excel training um, or this, this analysis. Okay, good practice. Um, uh, I, I would strongly suggest running through this example.